Hi, this is Zach Hartle here. Uh, welcome to my series of videos. There's going to be three of them on series resistive reactive circuits. And what I mean by resistive reactive circuits is I have a resistive component and a reactive component. Now, in this case, it's a pure coil and a resistor. It could be a dirty coil. It could be a resistor and a capacitor in series. They're all pretty much the exact same process. Uh, so in this first video, which is an introductory video, right, we're going to take it step by step. They might move a little slow if you've done this before. Uh, it's just an intro, though. Uh, so in this video, we're going to deal with impedance and with current. Now, it's very, very important to remember when we are doing a series circuit, the current is going to be the same through the entire circuit. That basic rule doesn't change. So what I really want to find out in any time I'm doing a series circuit is I want to know what that current value is. Once I know what current is, everything else becomes very, very easy to find. So in this case, and like all cases, if we are looking for current, we are going to have to go I equals E over Z. And the reason I say Z is because we are dealing with that AC circuit. We know we have resistance, and we know because it's AC, we are going to have inductive reactance due to the inductance. So let's start it off. So I'm like, OK, in this circuit, I have 10 ohms of resistance. I'm good. I need to take my millihenry value, and I need to turn that into inductive reactance, also an ohmic value. So we know our formula. I'm going to go XL equals 2 pi frequency times inductance. Remember to turn this into henrys instead of millihenrys. And in this case, we get an XL of 18.096 ohms. So that's the ohmic value due to inductive reactance in this circuit. Now, ohms, uh, if they are all caused by resistance or all caused by inductance, is one thing. But in this case, we have our in-phase ohms, right? And we know vo uh, voltage and current over a resistor are in-phase. So our ohms are in-phase. Voltage and current on an inductor are 90 degrees out of phase. So we see that XL also at a 90 degree angle. What that gives us in this case, in this particular question, is we actually see an impedance triangle, which comes from our resistance, which we said was 10 ohms. And we said our XL, which was 18.096 ohms. Well, what we have to do when we have a triangle, right, and it would be a right angle triangle, our resistance is on the horizontal, our inductive reactance, or if you were doing a capacitor, our capacitive reactance would be on the vertical. We can add all those up using Pythagorean's theorem. So we are going to go Z equals the square root of R squared plus X, in this case, XL squared. Right? And remember, those would be in brackets. In this case, we get an impedance of 20.675 ohms. And that is our Z total for the circuit. What we do with that and what you would want to do next is now that we know our total voltage, it was given in this case, won't always be given. Sometimes we'll have to calculate it or sometimes we'll have to use other values. In this case, it was given. We can now fill in this formula. We can go 240 volts divided by... 20.675 ohms, and we can get our current for the circuit. Our current is 11.608 amps. Now we know that 11.608 amps is flowing everywhere in the whole circuit. So in this circuit, now we've solved for our circuit impedance and for our total current. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about the certain volt drops that are going to apply to this circuit. And in the third video, we are going to talk about the power relationships in this circuit. Thanks for watching. I hope it's helped.